Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video today, we are going to be starting off our neuro series with central nervous system, or the CNS, focusing on the brain. So if you do like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe here to Ninja Nerd Nursing, and then go check out ninjanerd.org. All of our notes and illustrations are up for you guys to utilize and use to study. So when we're talking about the central nervous system, we're focusing on the brain today, right? And as we go in through the neuro system, we're gonna be breaking down each portion of the neuro system, right? What, what consists of the central nervous system? What is the peripheral nervous system? How does that break down to the sympathetic and the parasympathetic? But today we're gonna be focusing on the brain, right? And when we focus on the brain, the central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord. Doesn't necessarily only mean that it, it's that because of the center of the body, but it's also where our processes of our stimulus and our input are coming in, right? We're getting all of that information coming in, and then we can send out stimulus as well. It's broken separately into the brain and the spinal cord because there are different uh, attributes and different functions that these portions of the body do. So when we are talking about the brain, you can think of it as a lot of different things, but we wanna focus on those five senses, right? Our sight, our hearing, our touch, taste, and our smell. And we also wanna think about coordinating movement and getting that stimuli. So if we look at the CNS, what we're looking at here, five senses, the coordinated movement, the stimulus plus the response, and then also cognition. And we're gonna break it down and real quickly go over the anatomy and the little function about each area of the brain. First, starting on here with the cerebrum and the cerebral cortex. So when we're looking at the cerebrum, we're focusing on this biggest part here of the brain, right? So it's gonna be this whole portion up top here. And the cerebrum is broken down into the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. So if this is an anterior and this is posterior, then this is the left, and this is the right hemisphere. And then it's further broken down into our gray matter and our, and our white matter. Our gray matter is the area around the outside that where we can then break into our cerebral cortex. And then our cerebral cortex is broken into four lobes. So let's back it up again. The biggest part of our brain is our cerebrum. And then it can be broken into our left and right hemispheres, right? And then it can also be further broken down into our cerebral cortex, which is the gray matter or the outer portion of the cerebrum. When we are looking at these four different lobes, they have different names that hopefully we, we know. If not, let's break them down really quickly. We have our frontal, and then we have our parietal, our temporal, and our occipital. Now each portion of these lobes also have their own function that is predominantly within that function. But I don't want you to get misconstrued that one lobe only does one function because the brain works together in order to make whatever type of process occur. Okay, so there are certain lobes that do majority of a process, but they can also help in other processes as well. So when we're looking at the frontal cortex, this is where our motor cortex is. So this is our area where we're gonna think about movement, gonna be able to initiate some type of stimulus and movement. And then we can look at our parietal, where our parietal is, that's where our somatosensory cortex is. This is where we're gonna be able to take in some information and figure out what it is. So we're gonna be able to get some texture, we're gonna be able to get pressure, we're gonna be able to get temperature, all of that's gonna be coming through our parietal. Occipital is our vision, or our visual cortex. So any type of stimulus or anything that we get with the eyes, we're gonna be able to interpret with our occipital lobe. And then our temporal is right down in here, and that's where we get a lot of our auditory cortex. Where you can also think about, this is gonna help us listen, but it's also gonna help us create language. So when we look at the cerebrum and the cere cerebral cortex, you can see that just from this one section of the brain that we're talking about, we can get a lot of different components of movement, a lot of different components of our senses, of our cognition. So now, as we jump over to the cerebellum, let's talk about what different functions that has. Moving on to the cerebellum, when we talk about the cerebellum, we're talking about this portion located back here at the posterior part of the back of the brain, right? And this is the area that is mostly in charge of our voluntary movement. Now with voluntary movement, it's particularly gonna play a part in things like our posture, our tone, and our balance. So if you think of these three, and you think of voluntary motion, you wanna think of highly skilled or skilled type of tasks that you would like to do. Things like riding a bike, playing a musical instrument, 
those are the type of skills that the cerebellum is really in charge of. And then we can move on to the diencephalon. When we're looking at the diencephalon here, we're looking at the brain basically cut in half so we can focus in here on the middle part. And when we're looking in here is three different components, the thalamus, this area here, which is the hypothalamus, and then right here, our pituitary gland. Now within the diencephalon, lots of different functions that can be going on here. When we're looking at the thalamus, we're focusing in on a portion of the brain that is really the relay system of the brain, right? It's taking messages in, it's sending messages out. It's able to relay and tell things where they need to go and what, where they need to be transported to in order for that signal to get through and then have whatever stimulus or response that we need. Underneath the thalamus, in this area right here, is our hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is basically the area of our brain that takes care of the basic needs. So you can think of this as our sleep-wake cycle, our eat-drink cycle, anything that has to do with our basic type of needs. It's almost coming from the hypothalamus area. And then the last area right here, we're talking about the pituitary gland. Very important, plays a role for us in regulating and excreting hormones. And if you're looking at all this and you're like, wow, you're really just glazing over the, the bare minimum here, it's because I'm going to have a video on each separate part of the brain up on the channel soon, so you'll be able to really dive into each one of these. But now that we've touched on the cerebellum and the diencephalon, let's quickly talk about the brainstem and the meninges. All right, engineers, now we're going to talk about the brainstem. And when we're talking about the brainstem, we're talking about the portion of the body where the brain is connected to the spinal cord, okay, which will be the next video that we talk about within the central nervous system. So with the brainstem, we have three different portions here. We have the midbrain the pons, and the medulla. So the midbrain is our area of the brain where it also focuses on that sleep-wake cycle. It can also focus on our posture again. It can also focus on a lot of other different portions that we've already talked about previously in other parts of the brain. So the midbrain is the middle of, middle of the road here of the brain, so I'm really focusing on those different types of vision and posture and things like that. Then we have our pons. Our pons is our area that is focusing on our facial expressions. And then we have our medulla. Our medulla basically takes care of a lot of different things as far as coughing, swallowing, our reflex, right? Blood pressure helps with our heart rate, can also take control of any type of digestion. So vomiting, a lot of um, different types of areas within basically that swallowing and gag reflex take place within the medulla. So if we look at this, we look at this really small portion of the brain, this little brain stem that's connecting the brain to the spinal cord, takes care of a lot of crucial portions of, and functions of our body, right? You're looking at the facial expressions that we use to convey not only um, verbally conveying communication, but also nonverbal, right? Those facial expressions. And our vision and our posture within our midbrain, and then all of these other components within the medulla, our heart rate, our coughing, our breathing, our swallowing, our blood pressure, all of that is taking control of here in the medulla. And the last thing we're talking about is the meninges, the protective covering of the brain, the spinal cord. This is a very, very uh, little material, very small tissue that's going around the brain, the spinal cord, but it does have a couple different layers that we need to touch on. So when we're looking at the brain here, you can see that I drew in this little uh, diagram here, and I brought it down here a little bigger so you guys can see. So we have the brain right here, which is the pink, and then the skull. This is outer portion here. And between there, we have three different layers that we need to touch on, which are our meninges. So the first, which is the one that is connected from the skull, is our dura mater. So this is that dark one here. So the dura mater here, the thickest of our layers that is connected, it's denser, right? It's connected to our skull. And then underneath that, we have our arachnoid matter, which is this spider-like, if you look down here, it's got this spider-like projections that are going from our dura mater to our pia mater. And within this, we have our cerebral spinal fluid. So this is a little area, a little pocket here of our arachnoid space that's filled with that cerebral spinal fluid allows our brain to have a little bit of movement within that skull. And then the last layer, the one that's closest to the brain here, is the pia mater. This is the thinnest layer, and it's also the one that allows for some blood vessels to come up through and also very, very thin, like, uh, tissue paper that's adhering to the brain. So when you look at these, we have three different layers, and this is the meninges, so if we have any type of infection, 
that's either within the cerebral spinal fluid or within the meninges themselves, we would see that within the meninges and we can call that meningitis. So that is it for today as we focus on the main components of the brain. In each video following, we're also going to talk about each one individually, go more in depth, really nail down what those different structures do, how these processes work. So if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, comment down below, and as always, until next time.